we're live. What's up, my friend? What's good, bro? Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. You too. We're going to be doing things here a little bit different today. So let's see if we can find the same vibes as uh, when we're normally in the same room. Yeah, we're in our first time doing this type of uh, style since we're not in the same location. I'm in Florida right now, and you are in Washington. Yeah. So we're yeah. literally opposite sides of the country, but that does not matter because we have a purpose. Yeah, we're. And this purpose, you know, should should guide us all the way through, even when we're across across the country from from apart from each other. And so it's got to gotta get things going. The topic here is a uh, purpose. And I felt like I wanted to dive into this because, well, for, for starters, I believe that this is something that is extremely important in the sense where every person should understand what their purpose is. Yet, if I were to think about when I talk to people across the board, this isn't just any specific age or a certain type of group of people. I always feel like the majority of people don't know their purpose. Right. Either don't know it or are confused about it or are even actually kind of down on the fact that they, they have gone through most of their life without actually knowing their purpose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. have, have you felt the same way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I feel like uh, when I talk to people about purpose, like if I tell them my purpose or, you know, just ask like, hey, have you figured out your purpose? A lot of people are like kind of sheepish or confused or like uh, a lot of times shocked that I, I know what my purpose is. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's something that a lot of people are trying to figure out right now. And um, to me, it's the thing, it's the first thing you need to figure out before you do anything. It's like before you even start a career or like go, you know, like dive into something, you should figure out why you're here. Cause you know, it's like, we have only so much time on this planet, you know, in this lifetime. And so if you don't know your purpose, you're kind of like, you know, like a ship without a rudder, you know, like wandering without a compass or a goal. Um, and so I really think it's like the most important thing for people to figure out, you know, in your, in your life. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I've found the same thing, like most people don't know what their purpose is and like, think it's like something that, you know, some, you know, the rare person will figure out, but it's not, not something that they either need to figure out or like that they even can figure out, um, which it, I, I think is totally untrue. I think all of us are here for a purpose and need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. What, why do you, so at what age did you think you figure out your your purpose for your life or or did that change yeah i mean it, i mean it, it definitely shifts and evolves but i mean the first time i was able to like tell you what my purpose is in like a sentence was uh 2007 2008 um when i actually started meditating or started learning about meditation and um learned how to meditate and um I read, essentially read a book by Deepak Chopra called The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. Um, and before. yeah, a, a few of his books, he's like really recommends diving in to find, figure out what your purpose is. Um, and also Wayne Dyer is another um, spiritual teacher. He passed away a few years ago, but a lot of his, um, his books are about like finding your purpose. Um, can you back up a little bit? I, uh, your voice is crackling a little bit once you get a little closer. No, we're in. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's been, you know, almost 15 years at this point. Um, but yeah, what, what about you? Well, I guess before we dive into mine, uh, well, I, I, I can go into, but I want to know what, what is your life purpose? I definitely want to get into that. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been fortunate in a, in a way where it came to me very early. I mean, extremely early. We're talking in my teens, I would say probably around age 14, 15, 16. That's when, and it wasn't anything specifically like a book that I read. Um, surprisingly enough, if I really kind of look back at it, it, it was a combination of, I think my brain was starting to have enough substance to it 
where I could see the world and I could see where, where I needed to be in the mix of this whole thing that we called our planet. Mm. So I was able to recognize that different people went about life in different ways. And that, that totally changed the course of your life, depending on how you went about your life. And that ultimately will put you in a place that you're either proud of or a place that you're kind of embarrassed about and you wish your life played out in a different direction. Mm. And, you know, my purpose has been more or less molded something a little bit more concrete as I got older, but it never really changed. Um, ultimately, it was very clear to me that I was supposed to grow into a leader, someone who is here to learn, but then also teach. And at the same time, show people that um, life is limitless and that you really can do whatever it is that you really want to do with life. It really depends on the limitations that you set on yourself. And so it, it became very clear to me that my life purpose was moving in the direction where whether if I was doing a certain type of job or a certain type of career, either way, it was going to end up with leadership. Hmm. So, so just, I guess, to state it, what, what would you say is your purpose in life? Yeah. Well, my purpose is to create the connection with people to showcase the, the direction in which people know in turn they should be going with. And so more or less to follow your true self. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a firm believer that we're constantly battling between two versions of ourselves. The version that we want to be, the version that we know we need to be, and the version that we are. The version that we've become due to worldly experiences, um, different, parenting methods, different friends that you've acquired, relationships, and those experiences mold you into a, into a specific person that is you literally. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I do believe that most of us, if not all of us, are always sort of battling with knowing that person that's currently there, but we deep down know the person that we need to be. And I, my purpose is to show people that they can be that person. Mm. They can get there. Um, you, you don't have to settle when it comes to your life purpose. There's some things that you, you, you should settle on, but when it comes to your life purpose, that's one thing that you really, you, you should go full throttle. Or um, now, as far as for yours, um, fill me in on yours. Um, so my purpose in life is to heal and to help other people um, achieve self-actualization essentially um really uh and that that was kind of revealed by through my um my health challenges and you know i uh i really think that i'm here to be a healer and to help other people um figure out who they are and what their purpose is um so yeah i mean sounds kind of similar to yours very similar yeah. which would probably explain why we have uh even started something like this podcast Mm -hmm. Because I feel like this podcast is really about that. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I you know, talk about a lot of subjects, but it all kind of relates to the same thing, which is self awareness and finding your purpose and like what do you bring to the table and how can you grow as a person to be able to help the rest of the world grow? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, becoming the greatest version of yourself and, you know, like fully actualizing yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's really what appropriate culture is all about. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think, because I, I would put a number, I mean, obviously I don't know the number, but I would assume by my experiences, the, it, it's a minority that the people who are actually have such a clear decision as to what their purpose is. I would mm -hmm. wager maybe 20% of people who I've spoken with have had like a clear idea and you could feel it in their, in their person that this is like, they're here to do this. Like, this is what they're here to do. Um, right. what, why do you think the other 80%, so to speak, why do you think the number's so high? 
So I actually, I would put the number of people who actually know their purpose closer to like 10% and the people who are actually like actualizing and living their purpose, probably closer to like 5%. Um, I think it is a rare, a rare person who knows why they're here and there's actually doing it. Um, and I think that's because of the matrix. I think it's because we're programmed to, you know, live these lives that are based on, you know, other people's ideas of what we're supposed to do. It's like, we're, we're programmed to like, you know, get a job and, you know, start a family or, you know, whatever, and then live these lives where we're not actually doing what we're here to do. We're just like cogs in a machine, you know, that really is the matrix. And I, I think that's the reason uh, it's by design, you know, it's like the people in charge and you know who set up the system and who benefit from the system don't want people to figure out their purpose because then they won't they won't work those shitty jobs and like be a, a cog in their machine so i think that's the reason that people haven't figured it out for the most part is because of the programming of the matrix i agree and so i guess i mean because that was like that was what episode 14 the matrix mm -hmm. yeah two weeks ago and so I was just watching actually a, a video a little bit early before hopping on the call with you. And this was a Ted talk. Um, I'll have to bring back the, the guy because I, I do want to give him credit for it. And um, I'll put the, the, the video up on the screen um, after or link. And he was, he was talking about how he went to his college graduation uh, a reunion 25 years or mm -hmm. college reunion for 25 mm -hmm. years. And he had gone to Yale, so I, I, Ivy League school. And then he essentially started his speech by saying that um, you're catching up with everybody, you're seeing people you haven't seen in forever. And, but he realized a consistent line, a consistent underlying tone of, of about 80% of the people he spoke with, which was they seemed incredible. They didn't seem, they spoke about being unhappy mm -hmm. and not having, not, not being not being in a position where they were living the life that they wanted to live and that was not in relation to finances mm -hmm. because these people from ivy league schools they had the houses they had the cars they had the the great jobs that they were told that they were going to get after college mm -hmm. they had all of the things that the matrix tells you is going to make you happy mm -hmm. yet he found out that about 80 plus percent of them were still unhappy and they had already gone through about half of their lives. Mm. And he realized the other ones who were not acting like that, who were saying great things about their life, who were very excited, I guess the other 20%, mm -hmm. ended up finding out that the type of classes and the type of uh, approach that these people went back in school is that they went and they did things that they loved. They didn't do things because of, what society told them that this was going to be the, the result of doing that so you get this degree you get that job therefore you get this much money and you can live in this place mm. these people didn't go about it like that mm -hmm. they went about it from purely from a passion standpoint like what do i want to develop who do i want to develop as a person and not necessarily how much money do i want to make because of that job mm. or by living in this one place and living in this one neighborhood and they seem to be some of the more artistic people in different areas, literature, geography, music, whatever. Um, but I find that to be interesting because I've seen, I mean, you and I, this isn't a surprise that uh, everybody knows the line, money doesn't buy happiness. Mm -hmm. Yet, we tend to make our major life decisions based on money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, along that line, we also tend to postpone our happiness or our fulfillment until like we've achieved a certain amount of success, you know, financially or, you know, monetarily. Um, and, you know, what people find is like a lot of times they'll get in either of these jobs or like they'll build something that isn't necessarily aligned with their purpose it just makes them money and then, you know, they have the money and now like once they have the money it's like they they're locked into this lifestyle that they have to maintain and it's like it's not fulfilling you know and it's like the reason that millionaires and celebrities kill themselves you know it's like they're trapped in this this life that they've built that's like not actually fulfilling them and you know in some ways it's like eating away at their soul 
Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I would like to dive into that because I feel like, so you have this percentage of people who get all the things that the matrix says is awesome. Mm-hmm. A bunch of money, you get the nice house, you get the hot wife, you get the cars, all, all, all the, the stereotypical things. And then you also have even a bigger population of people looking up towards it in mm-hmm. a jealous way, wishing they were in that place. Mm-hmm. I want to hear your take on it, but I can definitely say that there's been times in my life where I was completely sucked in by a job. I mean, I remember when I worked for Microsoft, uh, that was one of the situations where they pretty much owned me. Mm-hmm. I was working 12, 14 hour days traveling all around the world, doing events for them, uh, making pretty good money. Mm-hmm. But I was fucking miserable. I was miserable. Not only was I miserable, the little bit of time I had left over, I barely had energy to do the things I wanted to do, like yeah, make right. music, yeah. like work. And I got to hit it on this point because there's been an, an equivalent. I've, I've had times where I wasn't making that much money. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was almost broke, but while I was broke, I was doing exactly what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Spending time with the correct people, focusing on the right goals, reading the right, the right content, watching the right, you know, following the right channels. And even though maybe, maybe the bank account situation wasn't on point, mm-hmm. but the fulfillment internally was all there. Right. Did you ever, have you ever felt that way? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, um, I, you know, I had a a pretty nice job, um, a few years ago and then, you know, I met, met someone incredible, uh, Birdie, my former, uh, business partner and ex-girlfriend. Um, and she was, she was kind of the same, come out of the same thing. Like she was working in the corporate year in the corporate world for years and making a shit ton of money, but like really unfulfilled, um, and then, yeah, we met and, you know, hit it off and like traveled around a little bit and, you know, decided to, to pursue things that were interesting to us. And we ended up uh, opening a cafe. And yeah, I mean, that was like the most work I've ever done in my life. I was, you know, working 15, 16, 17 hour days sometimes um, and not really not making a lot of money, but like really making an impact, like helping people enjoy food who hadn't enjoyed food in years, you know, and like help like creating things for people that they otherwise like wouldn't have been able to experience. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that was like really eye opening to me. Like, I'm just like, I'm not I'm not going to spend time doing something just just for the money. You know, it's like I if I'm going to do something it's going to be because I want to do it and because I, you know, I feel fulfilled doing it. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I think it's something like, I think everyone at some point should, you know, just jump into doing something that you believe in and, you know, whether you fail or not, it's like, it's really eye opening because it shows you that you can, you know, fulfill your purpose and like pursue your goals and your, like your desires um, and still make money or at least, um, you know, get by. Um, and the thing is, it's like, I find when I'm, uh, doing things that like just for money and, you know, like living, if I'm working a job or whatever, um, I find I spend a lot of that money on things to try to like buy back some of that fulfillment, you know, and like, uh, Hope with the unhappiness. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, oh. um, I and, agree. And, Yeah. And I think that's, that's very common. Um, So yeah, I think, you know, the starting point, whether you're trying to make a lot of money or not, is like figuring out what's going to fulfill you, you know, and, and sometimes you can do that outside of work, you know, you can, you can do things that um, really just bring you joy. And then it, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do for work, because like, once you have that, like inner satisfaction, like you can bring that to whatever job you have, you know, and then, and you're also a lot less likely to be controlled and get stuck in a situation that's not fulfilling you. Um, And uh, to your point, I, I'm listening to an audio book by Tim Ferriss called Tools of Titans. Um, It's basically like, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's It's a big book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, one of the, one of the, um, people he interviews, um, 
has this saying that, you know, it's like, if I ever find myself saying, actually, it's the guy from uh, the office, but um, he said, if I ever find myself saying, oh, but I'm making so much money, like as a justification for staying with a job or staying with something like, that's when you know, you need to get out because it's like, if you're preventing yourself from following your heart because you're making a certain amount of money like that's that's really when you need to let it go and like it's a uh, kind of an indicator for him that he's like he's not being fulfilled and he's not um pursuing his passions he's, just, he's really just in it for the money um which you know at some point you, you might need to do that like you, you know to build your build your finances or whatever but um if you find year after year you're still you know just like oh well you know, I can't quit my job because I, you know, I make so much money, then like you should figure out like an exit strategy and figure out what you really want to do and, you know, start pursuing that. Uh, yeah. Um, so this was Tim Ferriss or somebody that was interviewed? Uh, it was this, one of the chapters. One of the people he was interviewing, he was a guy from the office. I actually forgot the guy's name. Um, but, okay. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look it up and uh, bring it back up on the reference video. Yeah. We're um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer that you can do exactly what you just said too, which is you can have a job so you can pay for your bills and, you know, take care of the obvious stuff, but that does not mean that you should stop searching for your purpose or for that matter, let go of your purpose because of it on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, I don't care how many hours you're working. I don't care how grueling that job is. Um, the moment that you let go, that's what things are going to start to go wrong. Hmm. Um, because I also still remember those times in Microsoft where I was working 13, 14 hour days, and then I would get off work at seven o'clock at night, get ready, and then go and shoot a music video for six hours from 8, 8 PM till, till 12 AM or, or 2 AM. Mm -hmm. And I'd be tired of shit because I had to go back to the hotel, wake up at by 6 a.m., only four hours of sleep and do it again. But guess what? I was tired, but your boy was fucking happy the next day Yeah. because right. I got something. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's two different things when you're tired and unhappy and when you're tired and fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Those are two completely different types of tired. One, you feel like you earn being tired. The other yeah. one, you feel like your life is just slowly just slipping away as yeah. things and minutes and hours and days just add up. Yeah. And so I want to be mindful about the fact that, you know, I hear so many people talk about how busy they are. You know, mm. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And mm. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's and, almost a, a badge of honor now. People are like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm so busy, you know. And I used to, I used to get caught up in that too, you know. Um, and I, I really, I think it's really important to learn to say no to things that like aren't, you know, in line with your purpose and aren't, you know, giving you fulfillment. Yeah. Um, and so in regards to, to that aspect, I do want to touch on the fact that, you know, like you said, it is like a badge of honor where people walk around and they think that because they're busy, yeah, that's good. Right. Yeah. And I always, when, whenever I, I go to a, you know, some sort of business where I'm, I'm either buying a product or service and I ask how the person is doing, the person who's helping me. And mo a lot of the times they'll say, oh, you know, busy. And mm -hmm. then I'll go good, busy or the bad busy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, oftentimes it's the bad busy. Mm -hmm. But I got to be honest, in many cases, it, it can be something as small as you spent 10 minutes towards your dream that day mm -hmm. who doesn't have 10 minutes yeah we're in. you know what i'm saying you can't look at me with a straight face and say that you can't carve out 10 to 15 minutes to read something towards your your goal or do a small action towards your goal or make a phone call towards your goal yeah everybody can do that mm -hmm. everybody and so to, uh, fill me in are, are certain things that have helped you find your purpose that you think would help others uh, in that sense where the people who say that they're too busy to get around to or they're just simply that their life is too much of a mess and it, anything you have to say to people like that that perhaps might be able to help them get to the point of some, some clarity and 
perhaps being able to find the time to really carve out some additional time to, to, to get it done? Uh, yeah, I mean, and it, it's the same advice or, you know, same to like thing that I always say um, is to meditate, you know, is take carve out some time in the morning to meditate. Um, and from my experience, if you take that time to meditate, it'll actually give you more time than you than you took um, throughout the day. Like with any time, you know, it's like if I get up, you know, an extra 10, 15 minutes early and take that time to just center myself, meditate and just like, you know, establish myself in, in like my true my true being my true self like not not getting caught up in the moment to moment um like dramas um i'll find that i'm a lot more effective throughout the day i end up having more time because i you know i spend my time pursuing things that are actually helping me and that are actually like um fulfilling me um, yeah. and along those lines, like if you don't know how to meditate, you know, just like, like if you, you know, find a guided meditation and even starting with like three or five minutes, like everybody has three minutes, like, you know, and if you can't go that whole three minutes, like without, you know, getting distracted, then, you know, that's even more of a, a reason to practice. So, so start yeah. small, you know, three or five minutes. And then um, also, if you don't know what your purpose is, like just take, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes every morning, you know, or any morning that you have time, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, just ask yourself, like, what is my purpose? Like, why am I here? You know, and then ask that question. If, you know, no answers come, then that's when you meditate, you know, you just let like allow your mind to kind of just like chill out and, you know, de-stress and then the answers will come to you, you know, you, that's like where inspiration comes. It's like, you know, a lot of people, it happens like in the shower or when they're driving or when your mind's kind of distracted from, from like thinking, you'll get some clarity, you'll get answers, you'll get inspiration. Um, but yeah, I mean, even just starting, like, why, why am I here? Like what, and you know, if, if that's too big for you, just like, start with what makes me happy like what what am I most interested in because usually your your purpose is tied up in that yeah I I would say before when I was a little younger if somebody were to ask me that that sort of question I, I could always answer but then I was also trying to help people figure out because I could, I could clearly tell most people didn't have didn't have a clue they're actually mm -hmm. looking at me I was like like I was an anomaly yeah being a 17 18 year old who was just dead center I'm like this is what I'm doing. Here's why I'm doing it. And it's going to get done. And mm. people will look at me like, oh, isn't that nice? It must be nice to, to, yeah. to like that. And yeah. I got like to be honest. Special. I got to be honest. Sometimes I would say things like, well, let's simplify it. Let's simplify it. Let's, let's figure this out. Okay. Because to me, it was such a simple thing. I said, okay, what do you love to do? Mm -hmm. And then people would sit there and kind of think, well, you know, I really like this and I really love that. And they would give me some answers and stuff. And I'd be like, okay, so that's a start. But now that I think about it, the whole what you love to do, yeah, that, that might play some effect. But I would go a step further and, 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 and say something more like, what have you noticed makes you fulfilled? Mm -hmm. so, like, obviously, we love a lot of things. Like, I love, I love chocolate ice cream. Mm -hmm. Right. But chocolate ice cream, other than filling my stomach, it doesn't make me fulfilled. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, I've come to find out that when I make music and then I play music live, that makes me fulfilled. That made mm -hmm. me that made me I love it. And then I did it. And I walked away like feeling like a million bucks because I felt like I gave something back. I felt like people really appreciated what I brought to them. And it was this this synergetic environment where it all made sense mm. i was at the right place doing exactly what i needed to do people were appreciating what i was doing for them and it was this symbiotic uh energetic vibe that was just unreal right, and yeah. that's how and i think that's probably how you feel about your cooking yeah yeah definitely yeah you know what I mean? you, um and yeah and i see that with music it's like i i experienced that with music you know it's like when i you know the rare time I, you know, come across like an awesome song, you know, it's like most, I feel like most popular music these days is all like 
geared towards very materialistic things that are like you can tell the person who's making the music is not really that fulfilled in their life because they're making you know very shallow music but when you come yeah, across someone half the time. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're singing somebody else's lyrics yeah we're exactly you know and that yeah the mo the fact that most popular music is written by you know just a few like ghost writers songwriters or whatever um you know and then you come across someone like bob marley and that's like like why his music's so powerful because it's like it hits your soul you know it's like he's really like he's got a message in there he's literally inspiring millions of people you know and like just changing changing the energy changing the emotions it's like when you get inspired you know it's like it can be for a positive or a negative you know um direction so song, by the way yeah word you know it's like and that and that's like why i really get that you're you know you're so deep into music because you know i experience it from your songs you know it's like when you when you're just in the zone you put out some just fire i'm just like man like this it, it like really brings you up it lifts you up you know and so yeah. so yeah um and, and that's the thing it's like everybody can do that you know it's like when i'm cooking yeah. you know if i didn't really care about it and just made some crappy food like no you know or like some mediocre food like nobody's diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah word you know it's like you might at, at you know worse it's gonna make you sick but like at, at best worse, it's yeah. like you know it's not gonna do anything but if you're like really inspired you put your heart heart into it um then it's like people it's it's life-changing you know it's like people really are just like i you know seeing that look on people's faces when they're just like oh my god this is so good you know and it's like especially someone with food allergies who hasn't been able to experience that you know it's like that's like what why i'm here you know um and then and even in that it's like they're if like inspired to to do whatever they do to that level you know it's like when you yeah. meet someone who's just like on fire with their purpose and really just like living their dreams then you're just like man like what am i doing with my life you know like what are my excuses mm -hmm. um so yeah man i totally i definitely feel you on that and music is just so powerful and it's like it's one of those things where 80% of the music out there is just like, you know, kind of trash. It's like, you know, it's going to be forgotten in two or three years because there's no real message, but you know, it's like, yeah, um, no substance. yeah you know, um, one of my favorite albums of all time is uh, Nas and Damian Marley. And I, you know, I know I've, like we've listened to it, but it's like, there's some songs like, you know, where it comes on and I'm just like, man, like, this is just like so good. Like, so inspirational and uh you're told. yeah if you're not if you're not doing that it's like what are you doing like what you know it's like I feel like you get that's like what you got to do um yeah. whether you're you know you're cooking or you know you're running a daycare or like what like whatever it's like you really like your life can have a, a huge impact and your your purpose can like literally change the world um yeah and so, yeah, I mean, it's like anytime I see someone who's like really on it and just especially if they're going against the norm or going against the the control or the matrix or the crowd, it's like that that's like, you know, that's why we're here. That's why all of us are here, you know, and I think we all need to figure that out. It's inspiring. Yeah, it's um, it's it's inspiring. It uh, it's contagious. Mm. And that's the, that's the one thing I've realized, which is, I mean, having, having a purpose, like you said, it should be one of the first things in your, if not the first thing that should be in your priority list as far mm -hmm. as figuring out in your life. Because, I mean, I can say that when you, when you are able to find your purpose in a way where you know the why as to why you're doing things. So kind of going back to uh, you talking about meditation, mm -hmm. I was telling you that these last few days here in uh, Florida, I've been really on point with my meditation, mm -hmm. uh, meditating for about 30 minutes to an hour every day. And I've, I've, I've spoken to you about it, how it's completely changed my, my vibration for the rest of the day to the mm -hmm. point where the next morning I was looking forward to another 30 minute session another right. 45 minute session, which, yeah. you know, I was with, I, we were living together just last month in Vegas and I wasn't meditating mm -hmm. that much. Mm -hmm. I was meditating in other ways, like through, through dancing, through just simply uh, going for walks, 
-hmm. but I wasn't doing the specific type that you and I are talking about now where, where you sit down, where you lay down and you close your eyes and you, you go somewhere else. And for the people out there who are having a hard time and you talked about how you said, you know, wake up, focus, write some things down. If you can't try to find a guided meditation. I know, you know, many guided meditations and, and different uh, techniques. Um, the, the guy that I've been using recently is a person I started following about two, three years ago called Jason mm -hmm. Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll, I'll flash that on the, the screen. And there are many people out there, but I can definitely say this. One is for sure is I did a one hour guided meditation two days ago, but done by him. It was him and another guy that they were sort of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. They have incredible voices. So mm -hmm. try to find someone who has a really appealing voice because it's going to be in your head. Um, and the whole aspect of this guided meditation was for you to see or uh, find your future self. Mm -hmm. So they walk you through this, this meditation where you are essentially, you know, in many ways, leaving your, your body, your, your, your physical world, and you are being propelled forward. And eventually you're, you're running into who is your future self. Mm -hmm. And in this guided meditation, they show you how to analyze what do you look like? Uh, how do you feel? Do you look happy? Uh, what kind of clothes are you wearing? What environment do you look healthy? Uh, all of these things. And before you know it, your, your essence of a being is showing you exactly what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because. I mean, I can see it in a way where it's so clear to me. I can understand how a person can have a hard time um, meditating, which I did when I first got it, started doing it four or five mm -hmm. years ago. But I can definitely say these things work. Like it, it, it's, it's a way for you to connect with your future self. And once you connect with your future self, now you know the why. Mm -hmm. And I think once you know the why, the purpose becomes a lot easier. Hmm. yeah word yeah and i mean uh another technique that's kind of similar to that is like when you're trying to figure out what you want to do in your life is uh project yourself you know forward to the end of your life like you're you're on your deathbed like what memories do you have that actually matter you know because it's like there's so many things we do day to day that's just like really you know random kind of um transient things that we that don't actually have any um impact on our, our life you know um in the, the grand scheme of things and so to like project yourself forward like what if I accomplished any of the goals that I'm setting out to do like which ones would actually you know mean something at the end of my life or you know bring me fulfillment on a deeper level um and yeah I mean also you know five or ten years like what like if I set goals and am I able to achieve all the important ones like which ones are gonna make me fulfilled you know looking back five ten years from now um and you know like what what will my life be like then that that is a very fulfilling life or you know a feeling fulfilling experience um and yeah it's like you know that could be hard you know to do but um you got to start somewhere um I honestly think we overcomplicate it mm -hmm. um I know I was the guy who always known what I needed, what I needed and wanted to do from early on, but I do think we tend to overcomplicate the subject. Mm, word. Um, I like you said. I think we we allow enough of the matrix to enter our being, where you are having a hard time reasoning things, mm. having a hard time to reason what kind of people you should be around, what kind of what kind of profiles and channels you should be following. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you don't even know what's left or right. And I think that's the problem mm -hmm. is the fact that we live in a highly um, stimulating world nowadays. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand that that's what you're walking into, th there's a reason you're lost because mm -hmm. the world is going in a, in a way like I don't want to sound like a negative person, but the world is not here, is not set up to help you find your purpose. You right. have to yeah. go out of your way to make that happen yeah the world is not going to be like losing sleep because you didn't find your purpose yeah if anything it's the opposite they're going to be pushing you to not fulfill your purpose to conform you know um and yeah i mean 
So uh, just to go back um, a little bit, you, you know, we're talking about meditation and um, that, you know, sometimes can be hard to get into, but um, so in referring back to this Tim Ferriss book, Tools of Titans, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's section in that book, he, you know, talks about, he basically says when he works out, he meditates because he puts his mind, all of his attention in whatever muscle he's working. But he, he said, you know, at a very hectic time in his life, he spent a year and learned transcendental meditation. Um, and transcendental med meditation is one of the most uh, well-known and popular forms of meditation. Um, you can go to tm.org and, you know, basically learn how to meditate um, through how to learn to do transcendental meditation. He said he practiced it every day for a year and it changed his life. He doesn't, apparently he doesn't do it every day anymore, but just doing it for that year, it, he says it had a lasting effect for him. So he was never, he's never been the same and that he's able to go into that state of meditation just very easily, whether yeah. he's working out, you know? And so, I mean, it, it takes, you know, it like takes some practice and some work to get to that place. But I mean, I can say the same thing. Like, I can go into a state of meditation at any point, you know, just like right now, just like you basically shift where your focus is. And it's just like, it's so soothing and, you know, just makes like life so much less stressful, makes you like worry about the trivial stuff so much less. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's Absolutely. like, yeah. And f from pretty much everybody, every successful person I I've studied, they all do the same thing, you know, and it's like, it's mm -hmm. a, a lot of times it's completely different forms of meditation, but they have some sort of practice where they, you know, get their mind right, you know, before they do things, you know, it's like, if you're making a big decision, you know, like taking the time to like center yourself and, you know, uh, relieve stress to where you're thinking clearly is going to be the best thing you can do before you make any decision. Yeah. And so, I think probably one of the, the key things about what meditation will do towards your goal, which, which I've seen directly, which is however long, whichever practice you choose technique, it will give you clarity, some mm -hmm. clarity on some level. Mm -hmm. And the clarity part, like you said, is what allows you to just cut through the clutter of all the nonsense you're not supposed to focus on. Mm -hmm. and go straight into the stuff that you're supposed to be in and that's mm -hmm. what I noticed that meditation does is the days I don't meditate it's almost like I'm still aware of what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. but it, it takes me longer to get around to it mm -hmm. I, I end up cutting my work sessions a little earlier sometimes mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll get distracted a little bit easier yeah well. and, and the days that I do meditate not only do I just kick the shit out of that day I mean we're talking mm -hmm. just one thing after another, you, know, you have a to-do list and you do all of it plus a whole nother to-do list because yeah. so much time was left over in your day. Plus mm -hmm. time and energy, which yeah. is pretty much the two things you can't take back. Yeah, we're in, yeah um, the most important resources you have. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so money, going back to what we were talking about, you can always make money. You can always make more money. You mm -hmm. can always make money back that you lost. Uh, you can always do a lot of these things. Now, the things you cannot get back is your time. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, the energy that you had during that time. Yeah, and your health. Mm -hmm. Your health. Yeah, yeah so, um, it, you know, just talking about this makes me think of uh, uh, another good aspect, a very, you know, important aspect is that meditation literally physically changes your brain. It makes your brain work more efficiently. Um, and I, I've been studying Dr. Joe Dispenza, who like his life yeah. work is all about this stuff, you know, and it's yeah. like he shows you from a like scientific perspective, like how meditation benefits you and how it basically allows you to, you know, think more efficiently to be more effective. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you're interested in like the science behind it, look up Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, he's, yeah, he's we actually- try to get him off. Yeah, word. Yeah, apparently he lives in Seattle. So, you know, not too far from from where I'm based right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, it really just having a consistent practice, even just for a few weeks will just make you a more effective thinker, you know, it really just it, um, 
helps you not stress out about, you know, trivial things like that. That's just one of the biggest things. Whereas like, you know, I, uh, I meditate, I was on a, a TV show, you know, I was on a cooking competition and, you know, like, I'm like, I love cooking, you know, it's what I do all the time. And I'm, you know, I get there and like, most of the other contestants were like super nervous, you know, and like really hectic. One of them was literally like, she's having like a panic attack, like <laughs> while she's uh, cooking, you know, and I'm just like super calm and, you know, doing my thing. And that like one of the number one uh, like comments I got from people who watch the show is just like, I like, how are you so calm? You know? And it's just like, I, I bring that calm wherever I go because it's, that's what I have inside, you know, it's like, and it, it's really because of meditation and, um, I practice Qigong every day, which is a form of moving meditation, but um, it's really, you know, whether it's yoga or, you know, Qigong or Tai Chi or, you know, um, whatever. I mean, there's all types of different um, techniques, but, you know, find what works for you. And, you know, like, don't, if sitting down and meditating for 20 minutes, like, doesn't work for you, doesn't work for, like, you know, who you are, like, try a moving meditation, try yoga, um, and I, I, I tell you about dancing all the time That's yeah the we're dancing yeah it's like my, when I watch Michael Jackson you know or um and that it's like that connection it comes through in whatever you do like uh and talking about purpose too it's like Michael Jackson you know when you watch him he's just like on fire you're just like you can literally see like God working through him you know mm -hmm. like spirits just like he's so connected you know and um and it, a lot of times it's people who like, maybe their life is a mess, a mess, but they, um, they, when they're in their practice, when they're in the zone, it's like, they're connected, you know, um, mm -hmm. another good example is, uh, um, Pavarotti. Like if you Google uh, on YouTube, like Pavarotti Nessun Dorma, um, and we'll put it on the screen, but, um, you can watch Pavarotti's and opera singer like as he hits this like the you know the main note like at the crescendo of the song you can literally like I feel like you can literally see God like in his eyes like he's just so completely connected to the you know to the spirit and you're just like it's like life-changing it'll bring tears to your eyes you know it's like I can sometimes can't watch it without crying yeah. um you know it's the same with Prince it's like when you listen to those like some of those like guitar solos that Prince gets in there I'm just like you're like you're what like listening to to God working through a person um yeah and, and that actually, sorry go for it yeah I, I just I feel like that is the ultimate expression of purpose I mean that's like mm -hmm. that's what you're going for and for the record Michael is who got me to want to become an entertainer and mm -hmm. go into music and so that just goes to show that one person starts their journey. They go through their life. They inspire. God knows how many people he inspired. Yeah. Millions, if not billions. Um, and myself being one of them. And I've completely, I mean, you can see a lot of Michael and my performance and how mm -hmm. I go about things. That, I mean, it's a lot of it, of his stuff spilled on to me into how I go about my, my art. Yeah. And so just think about that when, you know, when you're embarking on this journey that not only you're finding your own purpose, but you're setting yourself up to inspire many future people to come. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't think that part we even touched on that much because that's huge. Yeah. Like, so, you know, along that point, um, whenever I'm working on a project, like, and you know, this is something I've said to myself hundreds of times in my life is like, when I, when I'm like thinking of the ideal of like creating something, whether it's a restaurant or a new recipe or a cookbook or whatever, um, or a podcast, you know, I, I strive, like I aspire to make a project, you know, at some point in my life, I want, you know, some of my work to be as good as Thriller, you know, as good as Purple Rain, you know, it's like if I can create a cookbook that's so masterful, if I can, you know, cr you know, develop these I recipes, yeah, you know, where it's like where I'm I'm literally playing beautiful music with my life. Um, I I feel like, you know, if I can create something as great as Thriller, then I will have, you know, fulfilled my purpose for being here. Sure. Um yeah, man. It's um yeah, I've gotten goosebumps like six times. Right. Wow. Actually, that's actually something 
So several, I mean, back when I was like in my late teens, when I was like going deep, I like I was already a few years knowing as to kind of how I want my life to be. And mm. so you're young, you got all this fire and, and you, and you know, your purpose. And so it was almost just sort of like too much, you know, too much energy going around and everything mm. is just sort of super exciting. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember always telling people and then telling myself that I've always wanted to live a life where I get goosebumps every day. Mm, right. And actually, I do. I yeah, end up right. getting goosebumps every day, if not multiple times a day. And that's purely because I've given all the attention towards the things that light my, my, my heart on fire. Mm. You know, and it's not just one thing. It's not, it's a combination of adding things to your life that all complement each other, mm-hmm. that create this synergetic um, vibe, this emo- emotional vibe that they all feed off of each other. And I think that if you find your purpose, in, in, in some case, let's just say um, you, like, you, you built a company and it's doing well, well, mm-hmm. that's not to say you can't go and add something else to the, to the equation. Yeah, uh, right. Expand, expand it in, in a more and and even perhaps in some ways go bigger than how you saw you doing it even years before yeah we're in you know what i mean yeah yeah um actually it makes me think of uh napoleon hill um you know some an author we're both a fan of he wrote think and grow rich um whereas he you know talks about finding a major definite purpose for your life you know and it's like if you don't know what your overall purpose is for your life like what's your purpose for right now you know like what what like if you achieved it would bring you fulfillment you know it's like always having a a a target to aim at but that's a target that's always evolving and always moving you know it's like once you reach that goal you know it's time to level up and you know expand that goal to create you know, to incorporate other things, or it's time to set a new goal. You know, it's like, I, uh, I definitely want to, you know, like, succeed as a chef and, you know, put out amazing cookbooks, I'm going to start a food company, um, you know, going to open restaurants. But to me, that's like, maybe like 10 or 15, 20% of my overall life purpose, you know, it's like, it's not not something that I, you know, I don't want to be a chef forever. You know, I'm not planning on cooking for people, you know, forever. It's like, it's uh, a one aspect and it's, you know, kind of a, a stone on my path, um, but it, it's not the be all end all goal. Um, and, you know, yeah. it's like, if, if cooking or whatever is your, your one goal for life, that's great, you know, but I mean, my, my overall goal is to help people to wake up, you know, it's like, you know, kind of what we're doing right now is, you know, helping people realize that, hey, like, I could do something wonderful with my life, you know, I can start a podcast, I can cook, I can, you know, make music, I can, you know, write a TV show, I can act, you know, you know, I can build a company, yeah, get healthier. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be like, big you know it could just be yeah I want to improve my body I want to have a consistent yoga practice um and honestly it's like I admire the people who know themselves so well to know that like hey I don't have to do something that's like changing the world for everybody or impacting everybody it's like if I you know have a consistent yoga practice or qigong practice and you know I'm keeping my body healthy and I'm, you know, happy and like just having a positive impact on my community. Like, I I think that's much better than someone who sets out to change the world, you know, at the, especially at the expense of other people. Right. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's really, uh, it's an individual thing. So I know we've been focusing a, a good amount on the positive aspects of finding your purpose, which I think is what we should do. But mm-hmm. as, as importantly, most people are finding themselves on the negative side of things as to things that are happening that are not so good. That's actually keeping them from getting there. Mm-hmm. Why don't we dive into that for a second? Yeah. Right. Um, there's, I mean, fortunately, like I said before, I was able to find my purpose quite early and it's mm-hmm. never really uh, vanished from me. That being said, there has been times where the light was dim. Mm. Yeah, we're in. yeah, same here. And I remember that. And so 
I uh, fill me in on some of these circumstances that happen to you and I'll, I'll get to mine. Yeah, word. I mean, there, there's been plenty of times in my life where um, I was just kind of you know, like going with the flow or like doing things because like it was the convenient or the, you know, the next thing to do. But um, those are, you know, were also some of the most unhappy times in my life. And really, um, I, I, you know, I, I look back at them, you know, um, as a, you know, I think it was a positive thing because like a lot of times you have to figure out what you don't like before you, you know, know what you do like, you, you know, you have to figure out what you don't want your life to be like, you know, what you don't want to do before you can figure out what you do want to do. Um, so, I mean, the thing is just not to get caught up in the negativity and the, you know, it's like, the more you focus on things not going right, the more like things are going to keep not going right. And, you know, it's just going to drag you down into that. Um, and, you know, I believe in the law of attraction. It's like what you focus on grows and you attract things into your life based on what you think about, what you say. Um, and so I, I really think it's important to, to guard your mind, guard your, guard your thoughts. And, uh, you know, along with meditation, like one of the biggest benefits you can, you know, create for yourself is to have, you know, like have a very clear um, definition of who you are and like what, what you stand for um, and, and what's important to you. Um, and so you won't get caught up in other people telling you, oh, this is what you should do. This is like what you need to focus on. Um, so yeah, just, and a lot of the biggest part of that to me is self-discipline, you know, having, having the willpower to, you know, say no to the wrong things and to say yes to the right things. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, what, uh, yeah. yeah, what do you think, um, is like, if someone's like lost or, you know, trying to figure out their purpose or, you know, like maybe they feel like they're not going in the right direction or, or the world's not going in the right direction. And they're just like, so caught up in that, like, how, like, how would you, you know, um, suggest like people get out of that or. Yeah. Well, I think there's, you know, there's the obvious stuff that we've touched on, which is um, your health might, might, might be an impact. I'm going to, mm -hmm. those are some of the things that like, yeah, you could still be fine on your path and you know, your diet is not on point or you're not really working out or, um, maybe you're feeling a little sick from time to time and you're still able to kind of stay on track and I've experienced those things, but mm -hmm. for what I've noticed has been the biggest detriment for me. And as I look around is, um, who you surround yourself with. Mm. Lauren. And I mean, honestly, that one is as, as, as detrimental as it could possibly get, because I mean, we know the, the line that, you know, you, you become who you, who you are with, or uh, mm -hmm. you're the equivalent of the your five best friends or mm -hmm. you know those 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 type of lines and yeah man that shit's true like yeah you know like you and i have talked about this like i'm not gonna name drop anybody but when, when we get around certain people um passion and things like having a forward thinking mentality is like a secondary thing around certain people mm -hmm. um and if we hang around these people for too long it starts to rub off on you yeah we're in and obviously we're strong enough where we just talk about it and then we get right back to what we got to do. But if you don't even, if you already don't know your, your, your purpose, you're already struggling with that. And you're surrounded by these types of people mm -hmm. who are constantly feeding these half, half empty glass ideas, these sort of ideologies that are pretty much not going to bring any positivity to your life outside mm -hmm. of you just trying to flex some information on people. Yeah, you know, you gotta be mindful. Like, first off, don't share your purpose with everybody. That's mm. the one thing I gotta say. You right. don't need to go out in the world telling everybody about your purpose. That's not. Yeah. That's for you. That's for you to know. And then if you feel comfortable later on in life because you're finding your strides and you're getting your momentum and you feel you feel right about things and you want to be more vocal about it, fantastic. But yeah, don't feel the need to share your purpose with every person because not every person is going to, I don't want to even say support. I know not every person is going to support your, 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 your purpose, but I know some people will straight up just say some things that are going to make your brain go in the opposite direction just because they said it. You don't even believe it, but because the words got put into your head, your brain has to process them. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if you're, if you're not that well established in who you are, you know, especially if you're trying to change, like say you are, you haven't, you know, been living your purpose and now you're like, Hey, I'm like, I'm tired of this. I really want to, you know, improve myself. I want to like figure out why I'm here. If you know, you're still, you take that idea to your same group of friends who none of them have figured out their purpose. They're probably going to knock you down. They're probably going to like shoot down your ideas and tell you you're stupid. Yep. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. And that's, that has happened to me before. Fortunately, I was stubborn enough to just basically be like, F you, I'm doing it anyways. Mm -hmm. And that's just sort of how I've been. But I know there's plenty of people who have been really excited about an idea. They brought it forward to either their significant other or their friends who they were hanging out with. And it either was sort of laughed at or it wasn't taken seriously or straight up, they just didn't like it and said, you, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, it's a um, bad idea. <laughs> and, and honestly, you need to assess who are those people in your life. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not saying dump these people all together. All I'm saying is be very specific with how you spend your time with them. Mm, word. Because it will, yeah, it's, this shit's like cancer. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, can have a negative impact and, you know, on the flip side, like surrounding yourself with very positive minded people, like people who are really, you know, either living their purpose or trying to at least trying to figure it out. You know, it's like you can get dragged down by your friends, but you can also get lifted up by your friends, you know, and, you know, make, make it a point to hang out with people who are going to encourage you and who are going to support, you know, you, creating the best life that you can for yourself um and that's like one of the things with a group of friends that you know there a lot of them aren't really going anywhere like if you start really like setting these major aspirations for your their life not only are they going to kind of try to knock you down because it's uncomfortable for them they're actually a lot of times they'll either be jealous or envious and like they'll want you to fail so that they feel better about themselves sure so i guess the that's sort of like the fear of um a person going into success and you feel like you're gonna be left behind yeah yeah exactly um, you know and it could even be your spouse or your girlfriend or no, whatever that, or that, your boyfriend that's, that's actually what i was referring to because like mm -hmm. friends can get over pretty quickly because we all understand we're living our own lives mm -hmm. but when you're with a significant other boyfriend yeah. girlfriend uh, uh husband wife and you guys are living together and you're actually purposely putting your plans always in the same calendar. You mm -hmm. guys are always including each other in your decision making. Those are the situations where if one party starts to feel like the other one is just sort of like, you're just sort of evolving and you're really mm -hmm. finding purpose and you're just sort of floating through life because you're so happy and the other person doesn't feel that way. I've seen, though, actually that happened to me. That happened to me, literally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah, can right. care about it. I can even yeah. go a little bit into it, which is, um, on my relationship that I was in probably like five, six years ago, um, I was not happy in it. Mm -hmm. And I was in, in the beginning of my music career and I was already experiencing all kinds of great success. Mm -hmm. I was getting booked for gigs. I was starting to put out music. Uh, people were starting to find out about my name and it was all very exciting. And I, I was loving it. I was like, mm -hmm. fuck yeah, this is exactly how I want my life to be. And my girlfriend at the time, I, it's not like she wasn't happy for me, but it was she could sense that my happiness wasn't coming from her. Mm -hmm. And I think in a, in a weird way, there was a little bit of a, um, what do you call it? Feeling a little bit uneasy, almost as if she might think. Oh. The year uh, audio cut out. Can you can you hear me? Um, yo, do you hear me? We've been cut out. This is actually the government trying to silence us. Are you back? Yeah, yeah, I got it back. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I guess it's, it's that feeling, right? Uh, 
it doesn't mean that the person is going to get left behind, but, but just mm -hmm. be aware that that might be the feeling that they are getting when you start to find your stride in your purpose. Yeah. Because when a person doesn't have that and they look at somebody who does and you guys are already like this, there's a little bit of an enviness going on there. Mm -hmm. it, it can come from a healthy place because the person just kind of wish they had that too. Or it can come from a nasty place where they just kind of wish you didn't find that so quickly so you guys could still yeah. be back in the last six months with where you were at before. Living yeah. in, a, in a comfortable place where you guys kind of were on the same level, so to speak. Yeah. And so just be mindful that it doesn't mean necessarily you got to break up with the person or you got to move on. But you do have to be aware that you're going to have to navigate through life in a way where you're going to have to fight for your, your dreams. You're going to have to mm -hmm. fight for your purpose sometimes. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately it's not going to be a pretty thing every time. Sometimes it's going to be an unpleasant situation where a person just can't really be happy for you. They're mm -hmm. just so caught up on themselves that they just can't accept the fact that you'd rather be doing things related to your purpose than spending extra time with them. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, you're going to have to cross that bridge and 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 do it yourself but i can definitely say that that was like a downtime that was a situation where i felt i felt really mixed because here i am great things were happening in my career and i was really excited and then the person i was with would had this underlying tone of like no yeah and and it was i felt very i felt weird in the inside because i was like i care about the person i care about you i want you to be happy but mm -hmm. My purpose in life trumps what you think I should be doing. Yeah, we're, yeah, you know, and I think you know, for anyone in a relationship and uh, who's really trying to improve their life, it's like you're gonna have to get together with your partner or you know someone or who you're with and like be very honest. Like it's it might be in an uncomfortable situation conversation, um, but you know if you're in a committed relationship and you're really trying to change your life like the other person has to if not be totally on board at least be like totally aware and um so that they don't sabotage you you know and a lot of times it could be subconscious they're not trying to but if someone's growing and the other person's not it's usually very uncomfortable for the person who's not so so i mean i would suggest like trying to get them on board and you know try and not like like, hey, like you're and you know, don't make it like, hey, you're you're not in shape and you know, you need to get in shape. You know, don't make it about the other person and be like, hey, like I really want to make this change for my life and I really would appreciate your support, you know, and have a plan, make it easy for them, you know, to help you. Uh, Cause if you just leave it up to chance, like it's not likely that they're gonna be totally on board and helping you, you know, it's like cause if one person's trying to get fit and the other person, you know, eats pizza and donuts every day. It's like, you're, yeah. you're going to have to, um, to change something, you know? And so, so the person has to either be on board or at least be aware and at least not get in your way. Um, yeah. So, Very good point. but yeah, we're coming up, uh, we're over an hour at this point. So I think, uh, okay. you know, it's a pretty good place to wrap it up. Um, but yeah, this has been good. I, uh, I, I, you know, wasn't, exactly sure how this episode was going to go and I because I feel like purpose is something that is such a big part of our life that you know it's like we I think we could talk about it probably for like three or four more hours if we really wanted to I think um, we nailed it but yeah I mean I, I as far as like you know what we've covered like this for someone who's really like fulfilling their purpose or trying to fulfill their purpose or trying to figure it out I mean I think this you know is a good starting place um yeah, hundred percent. And so you got it, guys. Uh, stay strong, stay on your purpose, stay focused, uh, and we'll be back with you guys next week. And actually, for some additional little little side notes before we end off, we'll be putting links in the description for Brendan's cookbook, uh, so you can check that out. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be I'll I'll put a link to my new song that just came out too a couple weeks ago, um, nice. and then on top of that. We're going to be having all kinds of new guests coming up mm -hmm. on the show uh, for the months to come. We have guests already scheduled in, and I'm super excited to talk to these people from all around the world, for all the yeah. different topics. And I think yeah. this will take the podcast to a whole new level. Yeah, yeah, really great guests coming up. So I'm super excited about that. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right, man. Love you, brother. Yeah, I love you too, bro. All right, man. Take it easy. Yeah, peace. Thanks for watching this episode from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch other episodes, make sure to make your way to appropriateculture.com. You can also hang out with us in other social media platforms. They're all in the link in the description. And aside from that, if you want to listen to the podcast on other platforms like Audible, um, Spotify, any of those, you can also find us there as well. Link in the description. Take it easy, guys. Have a good day.